Hello, I'm Gerald Murphy uh, for the School Mock Court Case Project. I'd like to start by apologising for the quality of this video and indeed uh, the Skype training session we tried to run on Friday. Unfortunately we ran into a number of technical difficulties where people could see us but we could hear somebody else. So I'm going to try and do the tutorial best I can from home so again apologies for the, the poor quality. The Seniors Programme uh, for this year has expanded enormously. Last year we had two regions, the west and east of Scotland, uh, and some 13 schools in the senior section. The coming academic year we have five regions, encompassing 31 uh, secondary schools. That means that in addition to the intermediary trials, we'll be having semi-finals which will be held in the Borough Court in Glasgow, finals which will be held in the Lord President's Court before Lady Dorian and then the awards ceremony in the Signet Library at the end of November. When we tried the Skype trial on Friday we had uh, two uh, others speaking, uh, Lewis Richardson from BTO who's on uh, writing uh, committee and Jennifer Thompson who's one of my fellow trustees. Uh, I apologise it sounds like they're on a 40 gallon drum but uh, this is Lewis Richardson and what he had to say. Thank you, Jerry. Um, yeah, so um, essentially what we've got here is a very nasty uh, road traffic accident uh, involving one fatality and uh, one serious injuries. Um, the uh, pursuer in the case, Mr. Brief, um, suffers uh, serious burns as well as uh, an amputation uh, in, in the, the road traffic accident for an explosion. So, um, Really, we're looking at him being uh, sort of involved with the, the research of the case, and then there's the defender who's the driver of the other vehicle. So there should be a list on of the sort of main issues and notes for uh, a note for the tutors uh, on the system that Jerry will, will show you and you'll have access to, which sort of goes through the sort of the basic issues that uh, we think might come out of it. Um, essentially, there, there, uh, as Jerry's already said, there are so many different issues that people rise out of this particular case, uh, particularly with the additions of um, the uh, dog and the chemicals that we've added in for uh, that, well, that have been added in for this year. So, um, you know, it's just about sort of guiding the um, pupils as to what areas they want to focus on. Um, obviously, they, they won't know anything about uh, sort of the heads of claim that they might want to claim for, uh, aspects of contributing negligence, um, those sort of things, the, the, the arguments that they can be made in, in respect of those. So uh, that's really where the sort of guidance comes in for being, uh, for, for um, tutoring them as well as sort of the basics of uh, case preparation, case uh, analysis, sort of the good fact, bad fact um, stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite amazing what they can do when they get hold of the, uh, the documentation and have a look through it all and, and the arguments they come up with. And it's sort of guiding them maybe away from the more outlandish arguments towards the, the more sustainable ones, but it, it's really their project and, and for them to sort of really come up with them and uh, uh, the, the arguments they want to use and, and uh, sort of guide them along the, along the rails as to you know, where, where we think or where we think it might be going terribly wrong um, and uh, we help them with the more technical aspects of rotating uh, and preparing pleadings, etc. So um, the, the case is you know, hopefully interesting for tutors as well and there's quite a lot to it uh, as I already said um, but you know the, the, the basis of all is the materials and uh, the statements and recognitions and uh, the medical records that have been prepared by and everyone involved in the What Lewis is referring to there is the complexity of the case. It's Mr and Mrs Brief who's come over from America. Mrs Brief is obviously uh, a US attorney who's come back to look at uh, her family roots or trace back her family roots. Uh, they're in a car, uh, they stop on Berwick upon Tweed, they have a drink. Um, they uh, encounter Mr. Ridge at an intersection in the middle of nowhere, which so happens to be on the English Scottish border. Um, so we're tap tapping there in terms of uh, alcohol limits, etc. This year, uh, if you were involved two years ago, uh, we've added more to it. There's now a chemical spill. There's um, some neurological um, complications. Um, as we brought in uh, experts from four universities, 
primarily from Glasgow, uh, Dundee and St Andrews, um, who have added more forensics works, more neurology, obviously Dr Garrett in terms of medicine, uh, and even mobile phones. Um, the students only have 45 minutes in court. Uh, they will tend to choose uh, what areas are of interest to them, but obviously they will then have the uh, opposing team who will do the same thing. The result will be that each case will be fundamentally different from the other, as they can only argue certain points, but there's certainly a wealth of information uh, that they can look into. Uh, Jennifer Thompson uh, had a few words to, to add. We thought it might be useful for you if I just gave you a little bit of a chat um, for this, whatever you want to call it, podcast or whatever it actually ends up being, just about actually how the practicalities work of the tutorials. Over the six weeks of tutorials, what normally happens is that there is a, an introduction um, where everyone meets together in whatever communal space there is at each of the venues around Scotland. And there's an introduction. Sometimes we have guest speakers who come and do a wee bit at the start. And then what happens is everyone breaks off into their own tutorial groups. Hopefully by now you can log on to the website and see if you've been allocated as a tutor, either a pursuer group or a defender group. And usually how it works is that there is at least a couple of schools in each of the tutorial groups. So use a tutor with tutoring either a pursuer group or a defender group. Um, there's guidance on the set out the timetable about the different topics that we will be discussing at each of the tutorials. But as to how you actually conduct the tutorials yourself as tutors, it's very much up to you how you actually want to structure it and also be very much led by the kids as well. I think from my previous experience from tutoring, I sometimes forget quite how much back to basics you actually have to go with the kids at the start. These most of the participants in the project, unless obviously they've taken part in previous years, will never have heard such words as initial grit, defences, adjustment, all the rest of it. So I find that you really do have to go very much back to basics in terms of what you need to discuss with them about the documents they will actually be producing. Um, then it's very much up to you how you want to engage with the kids or have some sort of discussion with them. My experience to date though of tutoring on the project has been really positive in terms of the kids and their um, levels of engagement and willingness to interact with us in the tutorial groups. Um, what the kids are mainly interested though, and what we always need to be thinking ahead each week of the tutorial groups is where all this is going, which is obviously the eventual trials that run in October. And the kids will probably be wanting to know right from the start all about the trials and quite how what they're all be working together in their teams for. So for the trials, the way that the participants will be breaking, the students will be breaking it down, is that we usually have two students playing the roles of the solicitors once we get to the trial, and it's up to the kids themselves very much how they want to structure how they conduct the trials on behalf of either their pursuer or defender team. We find in the past that sometimes one of the students takes on the role of doing all the examination in chief and one does cross-examination. One of them might ask all the examination chief the cross questions and one might do the submissions. It's very much up to them how they want to structure it between the two who are playing the lawyer's roles. Then out of each of the school teams, there will be three of the students will be taking on the roles of witnesses. So they will be coming in the witness box in the court that you're all competing that your groups are all competing in, and they will be acting out parts of the various participants. Um, they will be asked questions exactly like in a real courtroom. Um, an examination in chief and also cross examined by the other side. As part of the marking scheme, the judges who participate in the project for us have a mark, mark sheet and there are additional marks available for um, acting and dress and costume and all the rest of it as well. So the kids can get really into it and we've seen all kinds of makeup, prosthetics, outfits, who knows what else, what you in courtrooms in previous projects. It's very much encouraging students to, to do that if they're playing with the roles of the witnesses. In each of the school teams as well, there will be a couple of students playing the, well, actual being the researchers. The researchers may sound perhaps to the kids a tedious role, but it's a really, really important role for the students who are the researchers. They very much are responsible for, as it says, the tin researching. They are the ones who will be helping put together and writing the submissions, drafting the questions, working out the 
actual law behind all this, because that is very much what the judges, the sheriffs are looking out for as well in the marking scheme, what actually is the content of the questions and the submissions that the students are doing. I think that's probably all that I have to say from a sort of how it operates in practice um, point of view. I will hand back over to Gerald. Thank you. As Jennifer uh, touched on there, um, in the team, the minimum a team can have is four, one being a solicitor and three being witnesses. Ordinarily, they will have two solicitors. One will either do the examination, the other cross, and one will do the, the closing submissions. They must have three witnesses uh, because they will get marked on the three witnesses. The other roles really will go down to researchers, writers, and, and so on. Uh, the timetables uh, will be popping up on the screens over the coming weeks once we know who the sheriffs are going to be uh, as the Scottish Courts Tribunal Service uh, is dealing with that. The team allocations have now been done and students, teachers and indeed yourselves can see which school is going to be competing with uh, what school. Now Jennifer, Jennifer also touched uh, briefly there on the terminology, um, things like initial writ etc we're not fussed about that and they don't get any great marks in terms of getting terminology right or wrong uh, and we discourage the use of Latin. It really is about being able to uh, articulate an argument based on the areas that they wish to to focus on. Key to all of this is indeed the, t uh, mo the, sorry, the website uh, and making sure that things are loaded and uploaded or downloaded as they should be. So on your screen here is the Mock Corp website. Uh, we're going to uh, log in um, as a uh, tutor. Uh, so if you just bear with me while I try and do that. Um, when you log in to your screen, um, each tutor has their own individual screen. Um, you'll have your details uh, here on the left. Uh, the schools that you'll be tutoring uh, are here in the middle part. And below that, you'll see uh, your team and who they're competing against uh, and which court it's going to be in. The uh, circle with a tick in it uh, are clickable. So for example, you can change uh, your email address if you so wish, uh, click update thereafter and away you go. Or if you click next to the school, so for example, we click here Belerno, the Belerno school will come up. Um, you've got your diary which shows you the dates of your tutorials. It shows below that on the right hand side the deadlines, the date for the initial writ defences. There are two adjustment periods. Uh, for the first adjustment period, the pursuers must adjust. The defenders may if they wish. And for the second adjustment period, the defenders must adjust before the end of that period. And the pursuers can also adjust again if they so wish. There's also uh, a date for lodging their productions and witness lists. In the middle, you'll see there is a, a countdown clock just reminding when things are due. So, for example, this particular one, uh, the initial writ has to be uploaded by 4 p.m. on the 3rd of September. Now, time is crucial here. At 4 o'clock, based on our server, not on their PC, uh, the upload button goes red, they can't upload, and they'll automatically get five penalty points. On the left-hand side of the details for the school, um, there's a username here for uh, Mr. Jack, who's the principal teacher at Belerno. Uh, his username is the name that you can see in the forum, and you can communicate with him by the username, and the students will also have their own usernames. Just below that, you'll see a button called Uploads, and if we click on uh, Uploads, you'll see here it's got your team uploads, so any documents that the team you're tutoring upload go here, so it'll be um, the defences or the initial writ or their adjustments and on the other side you can see what the opponents have uploaded so you can actually see all of this before you go through to your tutorial. So that's how, how yours works. I should have said on the menu bar there and we'll finish out that there's also your resources section uh, as, as well. Now the teachers because they will ask uh, how they uh, get into the system and what they're required to do um, they have a screen very similar to you uh, which you can see here. Um, they then have to authorize their students in. Now this is done uh, for security. Um, they have the same timetable that you see and they've got a countdown clock, although this is in a different uh, project, this one. And whoops, we'll just click on to students. When they go in, they need to allocate their uh, student to a particular team. 
uh, whether it be pursuers or defenders, then to a particular role, uh, and then they need to authorize that student in, uh, and they then need to look at saving that. And this screen is not working. Anyway, they save it, they can go in, and there we go. And that student can then access their materials. If the teacher does not authorize them in, then they do not get access to the system at all. The students have something slightly different. Um, if we go into look at one of the students again, again very similar in that my typing is getting worse, in that uh, they have the countdown clock, they have the same diary, etc. They have an upload section. Now this chap is not a captain. Um, each school will apply uh, one student from the pursuers and one from the defender as a captain. The captain's job, job is to upload their materials, taking away the responsibility from the teachers. In essence, in the seniors project, the teacher's role is very small, um, unless they wish to get more involved. Uh, they're not required to do any work, they're not required to do things within school. The students need to work uh, by themselves uh, and deal with that. The forum is the key area for the students to go and work in. The forum is where the, t the teachers, sorry, the students will go in and they can communicate with their peers if they don't have another means by which to do that. But it's the way that they can also communicate with you, if you're happy for them to communicate with you, without the need for you to give out uh, your work email address or personal email address. Indeed, this is the way we'd encourage you to communicate with the children as they can only be identified by their username. Uh, once they've logged in, as we've logged in here, uh, they can go into the Senior Student Forum. Um, we will post up notes in terms of anything that's coming up. At the moment, you see there is nothing, because uh, obviously the project's just starting. But as that develops, they can ask uh, us of questions, they can ask you questions. They can also send private messages to you and to uh, the experts, for example, like Dr. Garrett, uh, who's uh, in charge of medicine. Um, when we say they're private, we can see them, but the uh, other students from opposing teams cannot see them. So it's a great way, a great resource for them. Over the coming weeks, we are, uh, and we have invested in a new video conferencing system, which is going through its final stages of testing. Um, it's um, guaranteed as, as much more reliable than uh, Skype was last Friday. And it gives an opportunity for uh, a group of students, if they so wish, to engage with an expert who can't come to their tutorial to effectively have, for lack of a better phrase, a one-to-one -one session with them to ask questions to get a better grip in terms of what it is they're trying to, to debate. So the forum is really important. Uh, as I said earlier, uploading of documents is crucial. Uh, if they miss a deadline, there are no excuses accepted. It is five points off and a further point for every 24 hours they're late. Now, the reason for that is if, for example, the initial writ is late, it's going to either penalize the defenders uh, by giving them less time or indeed force them to, to file late as well. So we try and discourage late filing uh, as much as possible. That's really uh, from us. If you've got any questions, we have uh, uh, a couple of administrators uh, who are available during the day. Uh, you can post questions obviously here on the forum. Uh, the uh, admin is the, administ uh, the administrator's forum name here. You can send messages either uh, on by posting on the uh, page or by sending private messages or indeed by sending emails to info at mockcourt.org.uk. Finally, can I say thank you very much for agreeing to tutor. Again, my sincere apologies for the quality of this broadcast and indeed the issues we had last Friday. Thank you very much.